this fair play 2333 and i want to give a salute to all my cinema cronies welcome back to the power book multiverse and cinema show where you get the latest in power universe and cinema breakdown I, I, I just want the life that in this can't afford we whip, we whipping them babies once you can't afford not looking for beef but some you can't avoid and if i'm on a mission is you on the voyage Drew and Kane finally meet up, and to this point, nobody has to drop on each other, but we do know from the trailer that Drew will eventually pull a blicky on Kane, and Kane will basically tell him, do it. Drew will yell out like a young lady because he can't do it. Um, Drew not set up for the game right now, but as I've been thinking about it, something could happen that could change Drew's mind and actually force Drew hand into killing Kane. You know, sometimes survival mode kick in. In Drew's mind, he's probably thinking, yo, this is my brother. I can't do that. I've been raised with him all my life. He's never hurt me. He would never hurt me. But it may come to a point to where Drew may say, wait, I thought he wouldn't kill me. And that's why I didn't kill him. That's why I didn't kill the, pull the trigger. But now since I know for a fact that he'll try to kill me or hurt me, I definitely have to put myself in a position of self-preservation. And Drew may end up killing Kane at some point. And no, I'm not predicting that Drew will kill Kane next episode. I'm saying that it's a possibility that Drew back to the wall, he would possibly kill Kane. But I personally think that Kane is gonna kill Drew at some point because I believe that Kane is going to get a spinoff and I believe it's going to be in London and he may end up having to run to London with Noma after he killed Drew and he started to, uh, the police started to hunt him down. Monet is back in the house after Drew and Diana took off. Kane is now back in the house after not being able to take that shot. And I think that the way Monet is looking, she's actually talking to Janet. And I think Janet gonna make some sense and bring some solace to Monet at some point. We do understand that Monet is gonna call Kane off and tell Kane not to hurt them, not to do nothing. But Kane can still take it into his own hand to wanna do something because he feel like they violated and they need to be get um, done away with. Now, from one perspective, Kane could feel like if they'll kill their own mama or they'll set their own mama up to be killed, they can kill him or they can kill anybody. But also on the other hand, Kane got to be real with himself and say, hey, if Monet can set Lorenzo up to be killed, she can set him up to be killed or she can kill anybody. And they have had discrepancies where she's told Kane that she'll put him down herself. So when we look at this situation, Kane is definitely at a crossroad. And I think the only way that Kane survives this is if he gets away from Monet fully and he basically starts running with Noma full time. But full time, like basically just cut his mama off. No business. Mom is just mom. And, you know, business is not anymore between them two. But we got to wait to see what's going to happen from this situation. But I'm sure Monet is in disbelief now. Diane is sitting down with Salim and the only thing I could think she doing is telling him that she's pregnant. Now, do she think it's Tyreek baby? I don't think she think it's Tyreek baby, but I think she's going to say that. And she may not even tell Tyreek it's his baby, but she may leave it open ended for him to speculate that it might be. Now, when she sit down with Salim, I'm feeling like Salim probably going to try to diss her and maybe act like she's been running around with a bunch of people or maybe try to treat her like a hoe. And maybe that's where Tyreek is going to get upset with the situation. Now, another part of the situation, when we looking at Diane, she do still have on that black and Salim has on that um that turquoise. So one, I mean turquoise, I'm tweaking, that cream looking color. So that's the same color he have on when Tyreek him him up. So one thing I think could possibly happen is that Tyreek can come to the house actually looking for Diana. He could see Salim now and him Salim up and scare him and say, hey, where is she at? Show me where she at. Or he could start chasing Diana around to possibly try to hurt her. Don't hurt her. And then Salim pop up and then he rough Salim up to make Salim not say anything. Um, either way it go, I do think that this scene will play out um, probably not simultaneously, but these will happen around the same time. And like I said, Salim may just be so afraid that he give Tyreek the drop on Diane, Diana and 
hey, who knows what'll happen for them. But I highly doubt Tyreek is going to kill her this episode. Although I do think by episode seven, she might be dead. Monet has called Tyreek to the house and Tyreek is on business. He's on go mode. Now, Tyreek don't even have to let Monet know that he was in on the plan because Monet has seen Diana there. So at that point, whatever happened from that point, Monet don't care about. She just care about the fact that she see Diana on Kate's Egan ring camera. Now, for a brief intermission, if you have a Facebook, go join Power Book Multiverse and Cinema. It's one of the largest and fastest growing groups for the Power Universe on Facebook. Oh, and it's global. We have people from all around the world in there. If you don't believe me, just go become a member and find out. Tyreek definitely going to go on the hunt. So when we look at this situation, we see how Kane looking at him. Kane don't like him. But when Tyreek go on the hunt for Diane, I think that he going to end up coming back and telling Monet that she pregnant um, because Monet probably not going to be talking to Diane at all. Once she finds out Diane is pregnant, that's when I think it's going to be forgivable. But Diane going to get caught up in a crossfire of something. I don't know exactly what it is, but I definitely believe she got to be dead by no later than episode seven, right? I, I don't see her lasting past that. This is Noma as some type of black tie event. Now, for when I first saw this picture, I thought it was Stern. I was like, oh, Stern back and he with Noma. But no, this is not Stern. Whoever this guy is, he looks important, but also he looked villainous. Now, this could be a regular black tie event, but if I'm understanding who Noma is, this black tie event is a cover maybe for a drug operation. So maybe it's a couple of plugs in here. Maybe it's a couple of weapon dealers in here. I think I would lean towards weapon dealers since that's what she initially had Mecca dealing in and she has Kane at this meeting. So maybe she's introducing Kane to some of these contacts and letting them know that he'll be taking over for Obi as her number two. That's the possibility of this. This will also be the scene where Kane will get some type of call and we'll see Kane rushing down the stairs. Maybe it'll be uh, the drop on Drew uh, after Drew had had him on his knees and put the pistol on him, but we'll have to wait to see how this plan out. Now, listen to me slowly. I believe that this is a black tie event, but it is for the villains. It's either for drugs or it's either for arms dealing or something nefarious like that. Tyreek and Brayden on the hunt for a place to start hosting their events because that's how they're going to move the coke around. Instead of going and standing in one spot and basically having to search out the junkies, they're going to bring the junkies to them in the form of a party. They got to get in the coke. This is the natural maturation of the situation. Um, and Ghost has laid the blueprint for Tyreek to do the exact same thing. Now, the only thing was Ghost was smart enough not to want to move product through his club because he was trying to move it legal. But like I told y'all in another video, I believe that Tyreek, what he's doing right now, is not going to be sustainable. It's going to be too many variables. People going to be able to kick him out the club. People going to be able to tell him you can't go in that room. People going to be able to ask them what you're doing in the basement, what you're doing over there, what is this, why are these people in that? And so at that point, Tyreek next goal will be to get enough money to get a spot of his own. And then I believe that's how he end up with what I believe will be truth too. Now, when we look at this situation, Monet don't actually look upset. When she's leaning over this banister, it looks like she's having concern. Now, I'm sure by now everybody has seen the trailer where Drew has a beat up face and Diana is running with him and they at the hotel. Um, the door looked the same, the wall looked the same, etc. But what I believe is, is that once Monet actually see Kane shoot at them, she's concerned because they are her kids and she have made a lot of mistakes. And I think this is the point where Kane loses respect for Monet because Monet is going to tell him fall back or she going to ask him, why did you shoot at them? Or she going to ask him, are you stupid? What are you doing? And I think when Kane say they both got to die, I think Monet don't agree or disagree when he tell her that in the trailer in the house. I think she just kind of um, don't really say much. But I think um, once she actually see Kane in action and she see that he's really trying to kill his brother and sister, I think she started to figure out like, man, what have this family become? What have I done? What is going on? Who am I if I can have my oldest son kill my two youngest 
kids, his brother and his sister, I'm a monster. And I think she's going to try to reverse it. But I think by this point, she's caused too much friction between the two and the way they treated them. Side note, they always say don't make any difference between your kids because they'll start to resent each other. Um, it's parents out there. And as a parent myself, I only have one child, but I do see how you could have a favorite child. I see people uh, with multiple kids and I'd be like, yo, that little kid is irritating. And I'd be like, man, that, that kid is laid back. That kid is cool. I could see how the parent would like dealing with that kid more because they less problematic. But you can't make a visible difference between your kids because you can draw um, a fight like this. Um, you can draw distinction between the family where um short story even more short in the words of jay-z nobody wins when the family feuds we know what's going on here drew come face to face with kane and i spoke on this a little bit earlier but this is going to be the first instant where you know they get into it and the beef is ramping up but we obviously know that at this point drew is not going to kill kane and we also know that kane is not going to kill drew at least initially we see the trailer where they both are inside of the store. Uh, Drew tells Kane he's always going to be a mama boy. They get in a fight. Kane beats Drew really bad across the face. And then from that point, um, we still see Drew and Kane alive. So we have to assume, which is a safe assumption, if we do, what's that word I like to use? The context clues, we can tell that Drew and Kane both will survive this episode. Obviously, we know Tyreek going to get the drop on Diana and he going to be running around there trying to kill her, but he's not going to kill her. And I believe it's because she's going to tell him he pre she's pregnant. Now, whether she tell him the baby is his or not, I definitely seen in one of the trailers. If you slow it down, she tells him, I love you. And maybe that could be what stops her him and, enough to listen. And then maybe at that point, that's when she tells him she's pregnant. And, you know, Tyreek has some remorse for her because of the fact that she's pregnant but we got to let this play out wait and see how everything goes with this situation but at this point Tyreek is not gonna kill her now what will he do with Salim we don't know will he pistol whip him will he beat him bad we're not sure and it's gonna come a point that Tasha is going to need a lawyer and she's gonna need that lawyer I believe for what Tyreek did to that guy at that store um Tyreek I don't think he understand how this works um, when you run down on regular civilians and you tell them don't call the police, that makes them want to call the police even more. Now, if you run down on a regular civilian and you beat them and you do something to them and you don't say don't call the police, they're going to be way more scared because they're going to be like, yo, this guy didn't even tell me to call, not to call the police. He ain't even concerned about call the police. But once you tell them don't call the police, that let that civilian know that you worried about jail time. You worried about whatever's going to happen to you. So what's going to end up happening with this situation is that Tyreek, after he did that, that guy seen Tyreek talking to Tasha. So he going to time to Tasha. He going to say that Tasha told him to do it. And that's probably going to end up getting Tasha kicked out of wig set. But it don't really matter if Tasha and wig set or not because Tommy's not gunning for her anymore. I appreciate y'all for watching this video. This has been uh, season four, episode four, pitches and leaks and predictions for what I believe will happen in episode four of The Reckoning. Salute to all the cinema cronies. Check out my original Chicago hood movie in the end screen, No Time to Play Fair. If your favorite Chicago rapper turned his mixtape or album into a movie, it would be No Time to Play Fair, starring and directed by me, Fairplay2333.